It has been a busy couple of days here at our farmhouse and in today's video we are going to be doing some of that. We are going to be making homemade sauce, mozzarella, yogurt, doing all of the normal homemaking tasks, making muffins, enjoying the season of fall. I am also beginning a 10 day intentional homemaking challenge and I invite you to come along and start it with me. This challenge is created for those longing to create a Christ-centered heart, joy-filled atmosphere, and a well-organized home. So come along with me as we create wholesome habits that transform our hearts and our homes. I have created a 10 day intentional homemaking challenge and I would love for you to join me. I created 10 days of tasks to help you have a Christ-centered, joy-filled atmosphere, well-organized home. And it is a free printable. I will have a link down below or you can find it at westmanacademyhomeschool.com. I also have a blog post that goes a little bit more in depth about this specific challenge and each of the tasks at hand. So I really created this for the woman who maybe needs a little bit more motivation or inspiration, some guidance on what to do in her home. Maybe you're someone who doesn't necessarily follow a routine or schedule, but you just want, you know, kind of a better idea of what you should accomplish in your day. And I really wanted this to be manageable, nothing too crazy, nothing over the top, something that you can start out and do and complete this challenge and feel good about yourself because the last thing you want to do is be overwhelmed with completing things when you're already trying to complete, you know, just normal everyday tasks. I wanted this to just incorporate your normal everyday tasks with, you know, maybe some efficiency, put them together and, you know, create that well-organized Christ-centered home. This download is free. It has two sides. The first is the challenge checklist task list and then the cleaning checklist for ideas. You don't have to do this cleaning checklist. You can change it depending on your house and your needs. This is also the same checklist from, sorry, Judah's on me, from the Homemakers Helping Hand Planner. If you have already downloaded this, you are already using the checklist or maybe you're not utilizing it yet, you don't have to print it off again. But if you have not, you can print it on the back side. My plan is to laminate this so I can use a dry erase marker and check off the boxes every day on this side. If you don't laminate it, you can definitely just use a pencil and erase it. But I definitely think personally, physically checking off the checklist will be a good motivator and encourager for you throughout the day. So how this 10 day plan works is you are going to be completing task one on day one. And then on day two, you are going to be completing task one and task two. Then day three, you're going to be completing tasks one, two, and three. So what you are doing is just taking the previous day's tasks and adding on the current day's task on top. So it may sound super overwhelming, like, oh no, I have to complete, you know, day one through seven's tasks plus then day seven's task and just keep adding on. But I really did make this a manageable checklist to where you can naturally just gradually add these every day and it's not going to feel overwhelming. And it's not going to feel like, oh, you have one more task to accomplish. Definitely take a closer look at the tasks, read the blog post, see what all it entails. It is actually super simple. And the goal is, the hope is, my prayer is, that both of us together on day 10, we are able to complete tasks one through 10. And then every day from day 11 on, we are able to continue to do tasks one through 10. So the hope of this whole entire challenge is to be able to create a habit of doing tasks one through 10. And it may sound overwhelming. It may sound like you are already discouraged because you're not, you know, you might not be someone who is good at doing checklists or following through. Maybe you are someone who needs more accountability. I truly believe that these tasks are doable and I think that they can really help you, which is why I took the time to create them. Of course, everything is free. I am doing this as well. I never want to, you know, preach or teach or do any, say anything that I don't believe in. Um, I don't want to promote or make anything that I wouldn't personally use myself. So know that I am here alongside of you. Of course, you can comment, connect with me, um, email me, 
if you have any questions or just want to chat about it or just tell me, you know, say, I completed this 10 day challenge. I feel really good about it. And um, th those are things that I truly want to hear. So I have created this, you know, channel platform. I don't, yeah, I don't know what to call it specifically for community to be able to reach out to other homemakers, other Christian moms and wives. Um, even if you aren't a wife or a mom, I want to connect with you because, you know, we, everyone does have the calling to be a homemaker, to care for their home and to serve others. So I want to connect with you on that. I hope that you find this downloadable, helpful, and hopefully we are able to complete this 10 day challenge together. Ah! I have decided to hang this up on my fridge. I see this often. It's right underneath my calendar and it will serve as a really good reminder to keep me on track. I did laminate it as you saw previously. So I'm just going to keep a dry erase marker near it and just check off the boxes each day that I complete the tasks. One area I have really been trying to be more intentional in is not wasting food. And so many lovely people from church have dropped by and given us fruits and vegetables. And I really want to make sure that none of that goes to waste. I wanted to make more pasta sauce or pizza sauce, spaghetti sauce, whatever kind of sauce that you want to use it for. I wanted to make more of it earlier, but because we had some other things going on with pressing grapes and me going away for the wedding, I didn't get to this batch of tomatoes as soon as I wanted. And as you can see, there are many that have gone bad. So I am just setting those aside for the chickens. I'm just going to be washing these tomatoes and then chopping them. I'm also going to be adding peppers and onions and garlic to this sauce. I have made this before on my channel, so I'm sorry that I am being repetitive, but this has just been my go-to. It's so easy if you want a quick meal. It's also really nice to just have fresh homemade canned tomato sauce, pizza sauce, whatever type of Italian sauce that you want. My husband also bought me this chopper that works super well. This has really made the blending process of making the sauce a lot quicker. Before, I just cut all of the vegetables in half and then blended it once everything was soft and boiling. But since we have this chopper, everything has been blending so much easier because everything is smaller. So I highly recommend chopping it up. It will just take a lot less time to blend. But if you don't have a chopper, definitely spend more time blending than cutting. It just, I am not one who loves to dice and chop, but if you are, then use this time, create sauce. It will be so worth it. There's nothing better than homemade sauce. After I have diced up all of the vegetables, I just place this pot with the onions, the garlic. I did not realize that I bought frozen bell peppers, but I did. So go ahead and add whatever peppers you have. I would have loved for them to be fresh, but frozen works too. I place them back in that large stock pot on high and I just allow this to boil. Once it boils and all of the vegetables are soft, I will use my immersion blender and blend it up. And then I just let that simmer for an hour, maybe two hours until the sauce becomes thick. In my 10 day intentional homemaking challenge, one of the tasks, task six, says to declutter one small area of your home every day. And this counter that's across from our island and across from our washer and dryer has just become the catch all countertop, if you will. I don't use it for cooking. It doesn't really have or serve a purpose at this point, except to just catch all of the little tools or papers or pieces that I don't want on my island. So they end up going here and I really want to declutter it. It bothers me and I'm working really hard to try and keep it from re-becoming cluttered again. This task is just so important for us to do each and every day because the more that we declutter just the small spaces really adds up in our home. My husband and I did this before we moved and it really helped. If you just declutter one drawer or one shelf, just one small area every day, it really does add up. Before we dive into scripture, I also wanted to add that 
with this sauce, I am just adding oregano, parsley, Italian seasoning, salt, pepper, sugar, just all of the normal seasonings, garlic salt, onion powder, and I just taste it. And once I like the taste, I go ahead and just let it simmer. When I was trying to figure out which scriptures to choose for this 10 day challenge, three things really came into my heart and my mind. And these three things are what I wanted to focus on when we think about creating a Christ-centered heart and home. And those three things are number one, praise, number two, mindset, and number three, heart. So I wanted to dive into each of those scriptures that I chose, talk about them, dwell on them, and really pray about them. The first one we are going to be talking about is Psalm chapter 9 verses 1 and 2. It says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. I normally know that my sauce is ready when I start to stir it around or scoop some up and it is thick, especially towards the bottom. You can get little pieces. We enjoy our sauce with some chunk, with some onion, some pepper. We love that. So if you are not someone who is all about that life, you can always strain it off. But we are a family here who loves all of the textures and flavors. I just want to say I am sorry for the lighting. It is about 5 45, 6 o'clock in the morning. So I am just getting ready. I am also talking on the phone with my sister. So if you see me laughing or talking, that is why. I am actually starting my hair first. The reason that I don't finish it is because I need the double mirrors that are in the, the bathroom downstairs, but I don't want to bring all of my makeup down there. So I am just doing my makeup upstairs and then finishing my hair downstairs. I am using the Tubes & Co foundation. I have been trying this because my skin has been breaking out terribly. I didn't really have this issue until about a month ago, but I feel like my hormones are slowly becoming imbalanced and I wanted to try a organic, more natural foundation. I am using that on my fingers because I have found that with brushes, I am not super consistent at cleaning them out. And so I want to make sure that I have clean hands every time that I use it and I don't have to worry about the bacteria building up. I'm also using the Fenty Beauty Cream Contour Stick as well as the Ulta Beauty Blushes. I am placing those on and just rubbing them in with my fingers. Again, I used to use a brush, but with bacteria... I'm just going ahead and doing it with my fingers. This is a Too Faced highlighter that I am using. I honestly don't know if Too Faced even sells this highlighter anymore, but I love it, especially for those of us who are super fair. If you didn't know before, I used to be a makeup artist. I used to do a lot of wedding makeup. I even made makeup YouTube videos. Don't try and find them. I mean, you can. I don't even rem remember my login but I used to be obsessed with makeup. Now I am so minimal. I am showing you what I do on a good day. A lot of times I will also do my eyebrows, but I really just wasn't feeling it. I like a more minimal makeup with a more pop of color on the lips. Honestly, nowadays I would love to just not wear foundation at all, wear a nice red lipstick and mascara and just call it good. For my hair, all I do is place it in a ponytail, pull the ponytail a little bit, flip it under, braid that ponytail in two braids as you see, and then just shove each side crossing over top of each other through the sides of kind of the fold and the ponytail. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. It's actually super easy to do. I'm hoping that you could follow along. Depending on how long your hair is, this tail may be longer. I call it a tail. The ends of your little rubber band braids. It might be longer where you can tuck it underneath the braids. For me, I have found it best if I wrap it on top of the braids and pin it with a bobby pin and just end my routine with curling my lashes one last time. The Mary Kay curler has been the best one I have ever found. I curl it before mascara and after. It makes a huge difference. 
All right, our Psalm 9, 1 through 2 says, I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. I was reading this out loud to my kids, but if you just speak it out loud, pray it out loud, shout it out loud, there is no shame in that either. So let's talk about that verse. Let's talk about praise. I want you to really contemplate on your time spent with God, whether you are praying, reading the Bible, talking to him, really think about whether you are someone who is well balanced in your prayer. And what I am meaning by well-balanced just means, do you do some praise along with some asking? Or are you someone who just kind of gets into the conversation of just asking? Because I know for myself, I have been there so many times. I will probably continue to struggle with that. But we have to remember who we are talking to during this time. And a lot of times we just get into, you know, conversation where we share with God our feelings and our worries and our struggles, which isn't bad. Don't get me wrong. It is absolutely the right thing to do to ask God for help, to ask him to protect your children or to help you with your health or a job or a situation. But I just want you to think about whether or not you are mindful if you also give him praise. If we stop and really think about who we are talking to, if we think about God and all that he has created, Jesus and just all his wonderfulness and all of the words that we don't even have to describe him and his greatness, do we sit there and give him the praise that he deserves or any praise at all? This is really why I wanted this to be number one on this 10 day challenge is really getting into the habit of giving God praise, really focusing on him instead of ourselves and just glorifying him like he deserves. I am just making yogurt right now. I do have a video where I show you exactly how I make yogurt. I did a gallon and so it doesn't fit in my yogurt strainer so i just take a regular towel this is actually a cloth diaper from walmart they did change the cloth diapers though so they did add extra padding if you do want to buy them at walmart but this is just just take a regular towel i place it on a bowl as you saw i used clothes pins and i just let all of the whey strain off in the fridge i also took out a bunch of leftovers that were old One of my small goals for this day was cleaning out the fridge and honestly that was probably a big goal but I counted it as my small goal because every Monday I go and get groceries. I pick up things from a couple places. My husband's actually close to one of the stores so he picks up one And I pick up the Walmart groceries. So I am just putting those away. And it's so much easier when you have an organized fridge. Also, if you see shaky video, you know who the culprit is. My son has been crawling now. And he is just so much faster than what I give him credit for. And every time I set up the video camera, the camera is shaking or moving. And there has been probably three times where it has started to tip over and luckily I have caught it so we are in kind of a dangerous game now but he's really just helping me work on angles because as I keep moving the camera I'm just getting you know different angles of footage right so I am just putting things away normal pantry staples and fridge things that I get every single week. I will actually have a video in a couple weeks going over, you know, everything that you need in your pantry to cook from scratch. So I'm I'm pretty excited about that video. I've been I've been working on it and I am getting my first Azure standard order next week. So I'm pretty pumped about it. Is this the excitement of adulting? I think so. <laughs> Now I am just taking all of that yogurt. It is super, super thick. All of that whey is is off now. And you can do a lot of things with whey, but I had so much happening today that I just didn't even save it. I know, call me wasteful. I just said I was trying to be intentional about not wasting things, but I, I just, 
I didn't have a purpose for it and I just cleaned out the fridge and I didn't want to stick it back in there, you know, and create more clutter. So all I am doing to make our yogurt so delicious is adding heavy cream, so good, and powdered sugar. And I just whisk in the powdered sugar and the heavy cream until I get the consistency that I want. So my kids love to have a thicker yogurt and so does my husband. My daughter today, who is two, was saying, ice cream, ice cream. So Sorry, that was a bad impersonation of her saying ice cream, but it was so sweet and I feel good kind of, you know, tricking them into thinking that they're getting a dessert, which essentially it is a dessert, but I feel, you know, pretty, pretty good that, you know, it's yogurt, (laughs) right? No? Okay. So now I'm just doing my normal homemaking tasks. Another goal of mine that I have Every day is when I fold the laundry, I am going to put it away. I often get into this rut of doing really well with moving them from the washer to the dryer and then drying them and then folding them. And then after I've folded them, I am like, oh, they can just sit there. I do not want to put these clothes away right now. And so I just leave them and the clutter on the table really drives me crazy. But I am trying so hard to be intentional that... When the load is done, I will put everything away. I get into this mindset that, okay, well, I'm doing another load, so I'm just going to wait till all the clothes are done, right? That only makes sense. But then I end up leaving the clothes in the dryer because I don't feel like folding those clothes. It's just a whole thing. So one of my goals is I am putting away the clothes after I fold them, and then I'm going to my checklist and I am checking it off. I am just completing another task from the 10 day challenge, which is writing one of your blessings down, acknowledging or writing them from that day. I decided to take a note card and add it to my handout, which I did put on the fridge. And every day I'm just going to add one more blessing to it. And hopefully by the end, I will have a whole stack of note cards together. I also apologize, my microphone is broken, so I have reverted back to just talking with my computer's mic. So I am so sorry that the quality has decreased, but hopefully I can get it fixed by the next video. My kids and I are making pumpkin chocolate chip muffins. My mom has always made these growing up. Mine definitely aren't as good as hers, even though it is the same recipe, but I wanted to keep this tradition going with my kids. So I'm actually allowing them to do a lot of the the things like crack an egg and stir, and then I kind of just, you know, do the, the mom part on the side, making sure everything is whisked a little bit better, scooping up the product or the ingredients for them. So what I am doing is because my daughter has celiac, I have one batch going that is gluten-free and then one batch that is just a traditional all-purpose flour. So I have split her recipe in half and then the only changes that I have made to the recipe that I showed in the earlier clip is I am adding one and a half cans of pumpkin puree and I am doing avocado oil instead of vegetable oil. The second scripture that is part of the 10 day intentional homemaking challenge is from Colossians chapter three, verses one and two. It says, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. The first scripture, we really talked about praise and How much praise are we giving God throughout our day or even throughout our week? And the second part, we are going to be focusing on what is our mindset? What are the things that we think about throughout the day? What are the things that we are the most concerned about? And are we focused on our eternal salvation? Are we focused on the things that are above? Or are we worried about silly, earthly, materialistic things or sins that we really shouldn't focus on throughout our day, but get kind of overwhelmed with in our hearts and in our minds because when we look at social media or we look at everyone else, we focus on all the little things that they are doing or the things that they have and we can get our mindset really turned around on what is important and what is not. The reason that these specific scriptures are added in the 10 day challenge and then hopefully you can incorporate in your everyday routine are supposed to be 
scriptures that are convicting, scriptures that really make you have, you know, an examination of conscience where you have to think about what is on your heart and on your mind throughout the day. And if you do start to get sidetracked or trail off in more of a, a sinful or selfish path, that after you see these verses or say these verses, you can get yourself back on track and focused on what really matters. For these muffins, I have just preheated the oven to 400 degrees and I am baking them for 16 minutes. You can bake them for longer depending on, you know, whether the top still seems soft or not. It says 16 to 20 minutes, but I found that 16 degree or 16 minutes at 400 degrees was the perfect temperature. I also want to point out the obvious that yes, right in front of us are pie pumpkins, but yet I am using you know, puree from a can. So it just, you know, everything happens in seasons and what's going on with the day. And what I find most important is just being able to spend this time. I count one day of school. Um, one of the life skills that we do is baking. So I'm counting this time as just being with my kids, having them learn, helping them learn to cook and to bake and really spending that quality time just making homemade food. So if you ever have food that you intend to make from scratch and end up not, you know, don't dis don't get discouraged. You can always, you know, cook from scratch the next meal. What's important is spending that time with your family, helping to, you know, teach them and involve them and just really spending time with the people that matter. I am just skimming off the cream from some raw milk and I'm going to be making some mozzarella. I had full intentions on making kind of a meaty ground beef pasta bake, if you will, with the homemade sauce that we made earlier. But my daughter actually ended up throwing up in the living room. So I didn't get the, the meat part cooked. So it's essentially just noodles, homemade mozzarella, and the homemade sauce, but it was really good. It was super simple, didn't take much time out at all. And so, you know, I encourage you, if you haven't tried to make noodles from scratch or sauce from scratch or cheese from scratch, give it a try. You might actually really enjoy it and don't get discouraged if it doesn't turn out. This actually turned out a lot better, the mozzarella this time than it has before. And that's because I did one teaspoon of the rennet instead of a half a teaspoon that I have always done because I followed the recipe. So you will notice that I definitely do not follow the typical way of making mozzarella. All I did was take one gallon of milk, heat it up to 90 degrees. Before it hit 90 degrees, I just mixed in water and citric acid. I did one and a half teaspoons of the citric acid dissolved in one half cup of water. I will link the exact recipe down below. And then once it hit 90 degrees, I am just stirring for 25 seconds or until you start to see um, little curds pop up one half or one teaspoon of rennet with one fourth cup of water. So I mixed that together. And then once the milk hit 90 degrees, I went ahead and poured the rennet water mixture in, stirred for 25 seconds. You don't want to stir for long. You don't want to over stir. And then I just let this sit. So this is what it started to look like. I knew at that point, okay, stop stirring. And then I put the lid on, started to cook the noodles. I, you know, had to deal with some, you know, stuff in the living room. And when I came back, you can just tell the mozzarella was set up. I have definitely come back where the mozzarella isn't super set up. So definitely add more rennet next time if you feel like it's it doesn't create a full thick blob, if you will. I I was going to do, you know, the whole thing where you cut it and then you take a spoon and you break up the pieces and you stretch it. And then I just decided, you know what, this is just going to melt in the oven anyway. I'm just going to pull it out, put it on ice, squeeze out the whey, add some salt and, you know, just kind of crumble it on top of the noodles and in the sauce. And it worked wonderfully. It was really delicious and super easy. So I will have the recipe to that down below, but you can also watch other people make more in-depth videos on mozzarella.
The last Bible verse that I wanted to go over is from Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 and 27. It says, A new heart I will give you, and a new spirit I will put within you, and I will take out of your flesh the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to observe my ordinances. So we've talked about praise and we've talked about mindset and now we are talking about heart. This again goes back to really examining where you are at with your heart, kind of the the things and the areas that you are struggling in, whether that be greed or selfishness or laziness, whatever it may be, we all have something And just being mindful of that, being mindful of maybe the bitterness or hatred in our heart, the sorrow, you know, whatever it may be, becoming aware of this and really taking it to God, really praying about it and turning to him and just asking him for a heart of flesh, asking him for a heart like his to replace the hardened hearts that we have and give us a heart that is kind and loving and gentle a heart that is like his so that we can do his will, we can serve others, we can have a more positive attitude, and truly it will help us just be more intentional in just everything that we do, caring for our family, for our children, and all of the tasks we are asked to do, whether that be at home or at work, you know, at church, wherever, and we can just be more intentional and, you know, do it with a happy heart of a servant. So. I just love this verse. It helps to keep us, again, grounded, focused on what's important, praise, and what is in our hearts and mind. The last thing that I'm doing is I made some ricotta cheese from the whey of the mozzarella. All I did was heat it up to 200 degrees, the whey that was left, and I just added in the juice of one lemon. It creates kind of these little flakes. I let them you know just kind of do their thing and when i get to it i just strain it off with kind of the towel that i used with the yogurt earlier and then i just place that in the fridge super delicious i hope that you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching my name is kelsey and i make videos on homeschool homemaking and creating a wholesome home